Hi everyone, this is Scott from Scott's Old Curiosity Shop on eBay and this haul video, well, it's not really a haul as much as it is three sets of glassware or china that need to get put away. So, uh, while it's sitting out here on the counter, I decided to go ahead and do a quick video and talk a little bit about the three sets that you see, uh, all of which will be for sale in the Old Curiosity Shop in Scott's Old Curiosity Shop on eBay. The first set that I actually already have listed is this fantastically, stunningly, beautiful Art Deco set. Um, wow, yeah, that's about as Art Deco as it gets. Let me just move in and let you have a good look at it. Most of you are probably very familiar with the Art Deco style of the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. Uh, this pattern of circles on top of circles with various fading in and out of the colors in blue and white and gilded is just absolutely beautiful. Really great example of that style. Now, this china is actually called Mapoko ware, and Mapoko was not a J Japanese company. It was one of those uh, American importers. There were many of them. Uh, Napco, uh, oh gosh, I'm not even going to try to start naming them, but I'll show you on the back that it's clearly marked Mapoko Ware, and then that does say made in Japan, although it's kind of difficult to read on that one. Uh, you can have Mapoko Ware that was imported from uh, Germany, Japan, uh, good grief, I think Czechoslovakia, Poland, you know, all of those countries. I think the German Mapoko ware and, uh, and Japanese is probably the most common. Uh, this stuff is extremely delicate. It's uh, eggshell thin delicate. Uh, I'll show you just how thin these coffee cups are. It's just amazing. And you know what's even more amazing is there's not a single chip or crack on any of this. Absolutely remarkable. As thin as it is. It was not expensive China when it was made. It was mass produced, cheaply produced for export. So, um, you know, it's got those little inconsistencies in the finish. That's just a part of the manufacture. But what's in this set are eight cups and saucers. Over here are uh, five tumblers or juice glasses. You can see in the light, it's, there's not a lot of quality control. You can see in there there's some indentations in the actual china, the porcelain inside. I don't even know if this is porcelain. Okay, and then back there are seven... Uh, really, I guess they would be lunch plates or dessert plates. Um, one lotus bowl, lotus leaf shaped bowl, which could be a serving bowl, a small serving bowl. Those are three extra saucers. There's a cream and sugar. Uh, the wonderful sugar bowl here has its lid. There's the creamer right there. And there's even a salt and pepper shaker. And then in the front are two small berry bowls and uh, underplates. Now I know they look like saucers, but they're not. The actual saucers up here are smaller and uh, they're upturned as some saucers would be. You can kind of see better in that picture. So it's, an, it, it's not a complete set. It's only what survives out of what would have been a much larger set. There would have been a teapot, uh, larger plates, you know other pieces but it's amazing that this has survived as thin and delicate as it is probably produced in the 1930s or 40s it's really hard to tell even though it's that typical 1930s art deco style now i already have these things listed uh, on in my shop and i'm running these as an auction um and i've broken broken it up into lots so the cups and saucers are in one lot 
I think the dinner plate, the lunch plates are in another lot, the cream and sugar, it's broken up like that. If you're interested, just check out Scott's Old Curiosity Shop, all one word, no apostrophe in Scott's. Um, actually, I'll try to put a link at the bottom of this video if you kind of want to check it out. Um, and yeah, I'm excited about it. It's beautiful. I <laughs> would love to keep it. But as I said, I'm not a hoarder and you just can't keep all the stuff that you fall in love with. Otherwise, this place would be a museum. Okay, back here is uh, a place setting um, a large group of what's called uh, Platinite. And it's made by the Hazel Atlas Company. Uh, it was produced in the 19, starting in 1940 in these pastel colors. Now, Platinite was actually being made as early as the late 20s and there are other patterns that were made in the 1930s one of them is called Ovid this pattern called Modern Tone is very Art Deco again in its in its style I'll zoom in here and you can see the salt and pepper shakers that's the cream and sugar there are four dinner plates four rimmed berry bowls, four smaller dessert bowls without rims, four larger, what would be sort of, I guess, cereal bowls. Those are four sherbets back there. Those are four cups and saucers. And in the very back, these were advertised by many companies as cream soups is what they call them. So whenever you see something like this with two handles on either side, it was referred to as a cream soup bowl. So you could eat your soup and then very daintily pick it up with two hands, I guess, and, I don't know, drink the rest of your soup. But that's what these are. Uh, so that really is a complete place setting uh, of four. And be careful putting that back. You know, um, platinite is actually, it was Hazel Atlas's, they, they coined the phrase, they actually patented it. It's really a milk glass or a milky kind of glass, this platinite has fired on colors. And this is in that typical sort of minty, jadeite green depression color. Um, and when you look at it in the light, if we turn it over, you can see the back of it is definitely, well, maybe that's not the best light. The back of it definitely is a, uh, a milky glass or a milk glass, as you can see. And then the rest of the finish is a fired on finish. It holds up well. It doesn't scratch easily. Um, it's pretty thick. It's pretty hardy. But for some reason, this just doesn't do a whole lot with collectors. They haven't just sort of latched onto it the way they have other patterns. Um, these pastel colors also came in pink, blue, and yellow. The fourth color here, this mint green, is really pretty when you mix and match it. Uh, but these sets don't really bring a large amount of money. There's, I'm not exactly sure what holds them back. Uh, there's a certain, now this is my opinion, when, when, you, when you feel a piece of platinite, um, I don't want to use the term uh, gritty, but th there's, a, there's just a certain feel to it. Uh, it's not a smooth glass. Uh, it has a certain, I want to say a certain, a slight texture to it. Um, I just don't know exactly what it is, but it's not hugely popular with depression glass collectors. Uh, it's beautiful. I love it. It's got a great deco look to it. That said, I have not put online for sale yet. Oh, by the way, I know I'm jumping around. Um, all of this broken up into lots. I think I'm hoping to get about $150 for all of it. We'll see what happens. Uh, it's hard to tell with an auction. I start out with uh, an opening bid, which would be the lowest amount I would take. Um, and but it is all broken up rather than selling it all in one in one lot. Um, and that set right there, I actually paid about fifteen, twelve to fifteen dollars. It's been packed away for quite a while. I didn't just pick this up, but I did buy it all at one time again for about $15. That set back there has also been packed up for a while and I don't remember what I paid for it, but 
I would really be surprised if I could get $100 for all of that. Uh, even though it's a complete set and pretty uh, extensive set, play setting of four. It makes a nice breakfast set or luncheon set. Okay, and the last set of glass I want to show you is this beautiful black glass or, or uh, well, it really would be referred to as black glass. It's probably hard for you to see in this light. Um, this was made, now, none of this is marked. That is all marked Mapoco. I showed you that. Hazel Atlas didn't really um, usually mark its platinite. You'll see there's nothing under there, but it is unmistakably Hazel Atlas platin platinite. And uh, so anyway, again, this isn't marked, but I am certain that it was made by the L.E. Smith Company of Jeanette, Pennsylvania. Now you'll recognize uh, that name Jeanette, Pennsylvania had at one time seven or eight big glass factories there. Westmoreland, it's actually Westmoreland County. Uh, the McKee Company was there, Jeanette was there, Ellie Smith was there, and others. It's out closer to Pittsburgh, uh, and I've actually never driven out there. Road trip. Anyway, Ellie Smith was known in the 1930s for their black glass. Almost nobody else was making it at that time and it set them apart from other glass manufacturers. When you hold a piece of Ellie Smith glass up to the light, it looks amethyst. And why don't we grab uh, one of the saucers and we'll do just that. Now I'm going to take this saucer and bring it over here. Bear with me just a moment while I move this lamp in and shine this in your eyes. But I want you to be able to see. You see how the light bulb actually looks purple? And if we pull the glass down, right at the edge you'll see, you can really see the amethyst color there. So it's not really black glass at all. It's, uh, it's an amethyst color glass, but it appears it appears black when you look at it. So this is an extensive selection of uh, place setting for four. It was made in the 1930s. It's in an Art Deco style again. When you see plates, square plates like this, it was very much the style in the 30s to have square plates and then to bevel off the edges and do this little zigzag. That's a definite 1930s style. Uh, this is a place setting of four. And what we have here are, let's see, I'm trying to do this with one hand and keep this camera still. Those would be the large uh, dinner plates at, oops, can you see it? Okay, those are the eight and a half inch plates. There are four of them. And then we go to the next size plate which I think is this one over here. And let's see, that was eight and a half. These are seven, seven inch plates. And these plates are six and a half inch. So dinner plates, I would say luncheon plates or salad plates. And then I would call these dessert, uh, I would call these bread and butter plates. There are also four berry bowls. Uh, there's a nice big serving bowl for your mashed potatoes or your lima beans and four cups and saucers. There are four of them down there. Oh, there's also a cream and a sugar, which, okay, Scott, don't drop it. There's the cream and the sugar. And this could either be a butter dish or an underplate. I actually think it's an underplate. I know it looks like a butter dish. You could use it as one. There's no indication that it ever had a lid. There's no rim here where a lid would fit. I've studied it pretty carefully, but it perhaps had a lid. I kind of think it was an under underplate for the uh, cream and sugar, but that's debatable. You can use it for whatever you want. Um, and then these little juice glasses in the front, I think they were added on by somebody. I don't necessarily believe these are Ellie Smith. But they make nice little uh, juice glasses. 
This black glass, I'll tell you, looks really awesome on, you know, like a red tablecloth or a green tablecloth. Uh, I really like it. It's gaining popularity with collectors. It's been kind of ignored for a while, but I think it's cool glass. And doesn't the green and the black really go together well? I think. So anyway, this set, I think I told you, I expect, I hope to get about 150 for the Mapoco. Um, maybe 100 for this. It's going to be a big push on that. If I break it all up, it's probably going to be closer to 70 bucks. And the amethyst glass, I did get all of this for about $25. And I might sell this in uh, place settings. So you'd get three plates, a berry bowl, and a cup and a saucer. And then I would sell the cream and sugar, the underplate, and the big uh, serving bowl separately. And just throw in the little juice glasses. So there you go. Lots of glassware and china all going to be for sale in Scott's old curiosity shop on eBay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Subscribe, like, tell me what you think, and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks, everybody. So long for now.